Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Umbrella by Pandasaurus. This is a game pictured by Vincent Dutre, one of my favorites. And in the game Umbrella, you are playing a puzzle-based game. You get a game board along with circular umbrellas that form a 4x4 grid that you'll be moving around up, down, left, and right, passing these umbrellas along to the sideboards here, which can then be going to the next player. And you're going to try and complete patterns based on their orientation on your game board. The patterns will be changing as they move from player to player as you complete them, and your objective is to fill out your board's pattern area as well as complete certain combinations or remove a certain number of the markers from the area, um, or if you're able to remove all the patterns from your game board to end the game. The player with the most points is the winner, and you'll score points based on each of the markers that you've scored, along with combinations of markers and removing your little umbrella piece from the bottom of your game board. Yep, it is a puzzle game in its full form. Let's talk about the setup, how to play, and of course, my review. The setup for the game Umbrella is quite simple, but it is a little tedious. And how this works is you'll place the main square game board in the middle of the table. Each player who's playing the game is going to get a rectangular board uh, facing the uh, vertical side, and you'll create kind of like a plus sign with four players. Uh, place every player's board who's playing in a corner, and then you're going to be adding these smaller rectangular boards on the outskirts uh, between the sides of the players. Based on the number of players playing, you'll be utilizing these black circular discs here, and these are what you're going to be needing in order to score your specific combinations of points. And if you're playing a four-player game, you'll need about 22 of these, and you'll set the rest to the side. It'll be changed based on the number of players in the game, as well as setup is slightly changed as well. Additionally, each player is going to get four combination squares. These squares are going to be aligned based on the little, little star sign on your board, and you'll stack them up. There should be two in the far left-hand side, and then two more stacked on the next far left-hand side. After you've done that, it's just a matter of placing the umbrellas. Each space that is not your main game board area in the middle is going to have one of each umbrella. That means the bottom of your board and each of the rectangular sides as well as the middle. And then for your game board, you're going to get a set of four of each color, but it'll be generated in a different random mixture. Uh, everybody's going to have the same amount, but they'll be in different areas for your game board. And the way you determine that is the bottom portion underneath your little umbrellas is going to have a color, and that's where you place your umbrella. From there, the game is basically set up. Okay, how to play. Playing Umbrella is simple. How it works is on your turn, you will get one action. After you take your action, you'll check to see if you finished or completed a pattern in the top row of your board. And then after that, you will pass. To take your action, you will simply choose any row or column on your board, and you will either move it left or right, or up or down. When you move a row left or right, you'll choose the row. Then you will choose to make it go to a certain area. So I'll choose this top row to go left. I'll place the leftmost piece in the left rectangle, facing my left player here, move the entire row in that direction, and then I will take one of the umbrellas on the right-hand side rectangle, and I will place it down on my game board. And that is how you're going to be moving and rotating and shifting your board to try and complete patterns. Uh, if you go up to down, you will take the square area here in the middle of the game board, and you will choose one of the columns here to move down. And then from there, you will take the bottom most umbrella and you will place it down at the bottom area here, thusly pushing the entire column down and adding to the bottom row here. The same is said for the bottom. If you take the bottom piece, you can slide it up in one of the columns here and you will place it in the top area. So left to left, right to right, up to up and down to down and thusly filling up the different four spaces, which are also used by other players in the game. So on my turn, I took one of the actions, and then I would check, do I complete any of the patterns? And let's just say, for instance, that I did. I'll move these pieces to coordinate them so that they actually allow me to complete a pattern. In this case here, I've completed this white pattern, which requires a three down on the uh, column and one to the right on the row. And this has been completed, so I will pass this to the player on my left. When you pass one of these little squares here, you are going to make sure that it fits in one of the leftmost empty spaces of their game board. If all the spaces are filled, that player will get to choose, but in this case they don't. Check the asterisk on the objective and place it accordingly on the spot. Then additionally check to see the color 
of what uh, umbrella you were able to complete the pattern by. In this case, I had the four blue ones. So I'll take one of these discs here that is, that is black and I will place it on any of the three blue spaces in the middle column underneath the objectives uh, for my scoring row. These will score me points throughout the game, and if I can complete these sets here, I'll score even an additional three or five points. And then I have completed, and I took my action, so I'm going to pass. If I didn't complete, I would still pass, and it would be the next player's turn, and they would simply get a chance to go, moving left to right on their columns or rows, uh, down, up, up or down, and thusly attempting to fill their own. The game is going to end when A, your entire row of completed objectives is filled by these little black markers here. B, all the black markers from the table have been placed. Or C, you have completed all of your objectives and there is none left on your game board. Then there's usually going to be a final round and there's also a little extra leftover markers just in case you run out of them. And then you will score. And scoring is also quite simple as well. You're gonna score points based on this little board here. You'll score a number of points for each of the spaces filled, as well as for each full, of, full space filled, these little combo areas. And you'll also take negative points for each piece that's still left in your bottom row here, where you're gonna be placing and moving them up and down for umbrella. Whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. There's a few advanced modes, which we'll talk about for the review, but for the most part, that's it. Pretty simple, move a col column or row up, up or down, push the pieces around, try and create the complex objectives, pass them along, get new ones passed to you, and finish the game. Score as many points as you can and win the game, Umbrella. So first and foremost, Umbrella is a puzzle game. You have a theme of basically sliding umbrellas across in the rain, creating patterns. So yes, you're gonna be basically puzzling pieces of circular bits around your game board to create certain color combinations of patterns. It's a very simple, non-super complex type of puzzle game. I put this in the same line as like, maybe a little lighter than Sagrada where you're sliding pieces along. It has a unique aspect to it of the sliding and being able to move it forward or backwards or left or right and trying to kind of weed out the pieces on the bottom at the end of the game or is completing different nodes to create combination groups to score you points all the while trying to push pieces in certain directions to not aid other players in their effects to try and score for their objectives. With a lot of different ways to end the game, typically you're going to see the game end by these markers just disappearing and there being none left, but you can also kind of create a little bit of an upset by removing your patterns by kind of customizing your game board to start removing, removing, removing one after another after another. If the player to your right is going to slow down, that might be a way in which that could happen as well. The pieces, the pieces in the game are excellent. They are nice, super thick wooden pieces for the umbrellas and the game boards are double thick with insertion spaces for where you'll be placing your objectives and your markers so that everything kind of fits in and doesn't slide off. It's a very good uh, uh, idea for keeping your pieces together and I do actually really like this move. I think it's a very smart one. And additionally, all the markers look good and you can tell the difference between each of the sections of your game board. While the theme is kind of lacking and the setup is also a little bit kind of lengthy, especially for one player having to set up each player's board with unique markers in their own unique spaces and then four different colors for each of the smaller boards. It can be a little like time consuming for a puzzle game. Now it's not a very long setup for, for a general like Euro or whatever, but for a puzzle game, it's kind of a little longer than I would have liked. But if you set it up with enough players, it's a quick enough setup where if you just have each player do their own game board and the pieces adjacent, it's not a big deal. The game's puzzling aspect is excellent. It does a very good job of what it's trying to do. It, it, exactly what it does and what I explained is how the game plays. And what makes it very nice is for people that have seen this video or are watching this video and determine whether it's a, something they'd enjoy, they can just tell based on this. But like I said, I always recommend you watch a, a playthrough at least once of each game you pick up just so that you get the idea and make sure it's for you. But it is a vibrant game. It's a beautiful game and it's well done. It's a game that when you see it being played on a tabletop, you're probably going to want to jump in because of how vibrant it is and how cool and interactive the pieces are and the thinky faces of each of the players and watching them react based on the available umbrellas on their left and right hand side as players kind of scoop them up and kind of persuade pieces to their area as opposed to your areas and being stuck with these at the end of the game is kind of a bit of a rush that happens at the end. I'm not a huge puzzler, 
it's not a game I would typically go and grab outright to play, but it is a game I'll probably see quite a bit of play from just because my wife really likes puzzle games. It's a great gateway game for people who like puzzling. If you like Candy Crush and like Tetris and games like Moonshell, the game that me and my wife uh, had published uh, by her design, then this is going to be a game for you as well. It's definitely more on the lighter side. Moonshell is probably a little bit more on the heavier end of puzzlers where it starts off light and goes kind of heavy. And then you have like Sagrada, which is kind of consistently medium. And then this game here is consistently pretty light with the... Uh, Availability of flipping over the objective tiles and making the game a little bit more complex, but nothing too crazy. Once you've played the first mode, you could probably just play the fourth mode and it's going to be just fine. Either way, though, it's a solid puzzling experience. If you like puzzle games, if you like the way this game looks and the way the game sounds, then it's probably going to be the game for you. And if you're not a puzzler and you don't like the longer setup for puzzle games, it's probably not going to be for you. Overall though, solid experience, a lot of fun, and a game I'm surely going to play again. If you're interested in this, video, in, this, in this game, there's a link down below in the description, but otherwise, it's up to you to decide. Is Umbrella's right for you? Well, for me, it's right on the level. Thank you guys for watching Learn Filter Gamer board game review for the game Umbrellas by Pandasaurus Games. If you're interested in picking up this game, there's a link down below in the description. And there's also a solo player mode for the game. If I didn't mention it, there's a solo player mode. I didn't play it, I don't know. I don't usually play puzzle game solo player modes. <laughs> except for the one I made. Otherwise, I didn't do it. <laughs> but if you're interested, you can go ahead and check out that as well. You're going to check out the uh, subscribe button. Check it out. See if it's right for you. Push that button if you see more than one of our videos here. If you think we've earned it, if you think we've gotten your subscription, you can go ahead and push that button. And the bell notification so you can see more videos that we've produced. We do at least two, three videos a week. And then we also throw on a live stream at Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games just like this one. It's on all the platforms. Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, X, Twitter, TikTok, no, it's not. It's, it's on most of those. So go ahead and check it out. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to pushing some umbrellas with you in the rain next time.